So um, I'm Judith Bates and I'm the Link Programme Director and myself and some of the Link team will tell you today more about what the programme is trying to achieve. <coughs> we will be recording the session so that colleagues who cannot attend today can watch at a time that suits them. If you have any questions, then please do put them in the chat bar and we will either answer them during the session today or if we don't have time, we'll add them to the frequently asked questions on the Link Internet site. The presentation will only take about 30 minutes to give you time to ask questions afterwards. Um, we will respond to your questions first at the end and then deal with other questions that come up on chat afterwards if we have time. To start though, Adrian Thomas, the Link Senior Responsible Owner, will introduce the Roadshow to you. Dear colleagues, Khrushchev, welcome to the Virtual Roadshow for the Laboratory Information Network Programme. My name is Adrian Thomas. I am the Executive Director of Therapies and Health Sciences at BCUHP and the Senior Responsible Owner for LINK. Firstly, I would like to note the impact the pandemic has had on aspects of many lives, none more than health and care staff. I would like to take this opportunity to record my thanks to yourselves and your teams for your professionalism, courage, commitment and the sacrifices you and they have made while caring for all our patients. Thank you. So a bit more about LINK then. LINK is run by NHS Wales Health Collaborative. The Collaborative was set up by the NHS Wales Collaborative Leadership Forum and Welsh Government to run all Wales programmes. It currently runs 24 programmes from cancer and mental health services to endoscopy and of course LINK. LINK was set up at the end of 2017 because the contract for TrapCare Lab, the current laboratory information management system, was coming to an end. But LINK is much more than a re-procurement programme and aims to enable the development of modern, safe, sustainable pathology services through end-to-end -end information systems and services. It also supports the delivery of the pathology statement of intent. I am what's known as a senior responsible owner for LINK and I am accountable for the success of the programme to NHS Wales Collaborative Executive Group. That's all the NHS Chief Executives of Health Boards and Trusts across Wales. I am supported by Judith Bates, the Link Programme Director and her team. You can find out more about the programme and the team in the Link Overview that has been sent out to everyone invited to this roadshow. We plan to come out to visit all the laboratories last year, but then Covid put a stop to that. In the meantime, Link has made great progress thanks to Judith and the team and yourselves, and we are keen to share this with you. Link has 10 objectives, and during this roadshow, key members of the Link team will tell you more about these objectives and then provide time for you to ask questions and feedback. Link wants to hear your views. As it's the first time we have run a virtual roadshow, we are also keen to know whether you feel this has been a useful medium through which to tell you what's happening. We will be sending you all the feedback form and hope that you will return this to us so we can learn and improve the way we communicate with you. I'm now going to hand you over to Judith, the programme director, to lead you through the rest of the presentations. Thank you very much. So LINK has 10 strategic objectives and the Roadshow will explain each of them to you and how the programme is aiming to achieve them. Just briefly, the first is to learn the lessons from LIMS 1. Um, next, to uh, deliver benefits for patients. That's absolutely fundamental for us to stay focused on that. To engage with yourselves, all of the pathology and the NHS staff. To procure and implement a new laboratory information management system service to ensure the long-term ownership of that LIM service and to provide an end-to-end -end electronic solution starting with electronic test requesting and results reporting and notifications and to help standardise services as far as possible allowing for warranty variation 
and to provide a national quality management system and service. That was a key lesson from LIMS 1 because of the difficulty in validating the, the, the initial service. And business intelligence for pathology and also improved integration. It's a very technical um, objective, but one that we consider is fundamental to improving services going forward. So now we're going to hand over, first of all, to um, Oh, so first of all, the lessons learned, sorry, on LIMS 1. When I first started, I spent a lot of time meeting and listening to staff about the current LIMS so that I could, so that LINK could learn the lessons and make sure they were taken into account when deciding how to take forward LINK and plan the programme. So you can see that the, there were all sorts of different lessons that we, that we picked up. So um, uh, it can take months to get a small change um, uh, made. And when we, we were given the limbs, we saw it um, demonstrated was a fabulous limbs. But when we were given it, we thought it was like being given a book with blank pages for us to configure. And that the supplier saw MWIS as their customer and not the pathology service. And LIMS didn't take account of all the complexity of the rollout. So you can see there were lots of lessons. So how is LINK learning these lessons? Well, we have a register. We, we, we created a register of all the lessons from LIMS 1, and now we're keeping that updated with the lessons we're learning on LINK 2. And we use those lessons. We went through them to try and inform, you know, how we took LINK forward, the approach we would take, and the outline business case. And a key learn, lesson learned, as I said, was setting up the National Quality Management Service. And you're going to hear more about that from Anna later on. And that also the supplier should host and configure the new LIM service. So, so the responsibility will not be split in future between MWIS and the supplier. The supplier will be totally responsible for hosting and configuring the new LIMs and for managing that service. And also that the new LIMS will, service will be developed and tested once for Wales um, so that uh, we won't have the position where we will develop it in one um, health board and then take it to another health board and redevelop it in a way. Um, we will develop and test it once for the whole of Wales for all health boards and trusts before we deploy it and then we'll deploy it one at a time. Um, and, and most important of all that we need to have better engagement with the service, that we need to allow the service to, to, to control what's happening really, to be in charge of the way LINK is going forward and LINK is facilitating that. So I thought it was important to share the LINK broad timeframe. From the outset, I've tried to set out a clear plan so that everybody knows what has to be achieved by when. We've lengthened the procurement to take account of COVID-19, but the aim now is to stick to this plan so that the new LIM service is fully deployed before we get to the end of the contract with Intersystems in 2025. LINK will be delivered over five phases or tranches, and we're now close to the end of the procurement tranche and preparing for the next one, development, where we will develop, test and validate the new LIM service, working closely with the successful supplier. And you will find out more about that during the presentation from the team today. And now I'm going to hand you over to Paul. <clears throat> Thank you, Judith. Um, so you notice a slight change of name, but I'm just looking uh, after Greg's slides today. So um, I'm going to talk to you about the uh, the benefits that the new LIM system will hopefully achieve. And um, we've had good communication with colleagues across health boards and trusts so far. Uh, particularly on the different types of benefits that this new service will um, will bring in. Obviously, very keen if you have any sort of uh, further additions or questions, and hopefully some of the recent uh, co uh, coffee time, break time challenges have been helpful with sort of um, helping provoke thought and discussion about adding to these benefits. So I think the question is, what's a benefit? And it's always a, the interesting question, but it's certainly something around what brings advantage or good effect. Uh, I think we've got three good examples here of different types of benefits. We have a financial benefit, which uh, reduces running costs, which is a, a big thing in the National Health Service at the moment. Uh, efficiency benefits. So I think we've got an example here such as uh, faster processing of samples. Uh, quality benefits, uh, such as a reduction in the number of repeat tests, um, but certainly some good examples of benefits there. But uh, ultimately, uh, the benefit there should be to improve patient care, safety, services and outcomes. 
I think all the work that we do in does uh, focus back on on patient services, and it's very and and rightly so as well. So within Link, we've had uh, a, a good, unique approach to benefits. We've uh, discussed robust benefits, which we've analysed these as being essential. Uh, we've put a national benefits register in place as well, which has been really helpful. So we're able to collate all the information from health boards and trusts and share that with uh, with colleagues across Wales. So maybe one idea in North Wales can be shared with colleagues in the South and, and so on and so forth. Um, within each health board and trust, we've identified local champions and these have been very instrumental in developing the benefits that we've uh, highlighted so far. Um, one of the key things that we do need to do, though, is agree the benefits by the end of March this year, and we we're working very closely with colleagues and with each of the health boards and trusts to adopt those into your local planning and uh, service uh, discussions going forward. Um, but just to reinforce here that the, the health boards and the trusts will be there to deliver these benefits. It's not the link program itself. It's uh, it's very much your service and uh, very keen to work with you on the development and implementation of your of your new limb service going forward. And I think that we have here perhaps in, in italics, only you can deliver the benefits in your own organisation. So very keen to work with you on a, on a partnership uh, platform. So I'm going to hand over back to myself um, and I'm going to talk to you about the, um, the engagement of the pathology into the wider NHS and to ensure uh, commitment. So why is, why is engagement with the service really important? So I think one thing that we've really understood is that uh, staff are very much the, the integral part of getting this right. Uh, so we all, we're all working together to improve patient services. I think we've got a very interesting slide here. It talks about uh, technology does not deliver a service staff to, and we certainly welcome the opportunity to speak to you today about this, so we can sort of work closely with you now and going forward. Um, technology can help staff provide a better service, and again, listen, wanting to hear your views and opinions about how we interact or what this model will be going forward. Uh, a quality service is dependent on staff, and we will hear a little later on from Anna on the quality work that we are doing. Um, and it's a pathology service that is leading link, uh, not the other way around. We're very clean to make sure clear that uh, pathology uh, is actually led by 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 the service itself, and that uh, we take a steer and a guide from yourselves because you are the experts in this, and very keen to listen to your thoughts and uh, observations going forward. Um, and we'd like, we'd like all pathology staff and the wider NHS to be excited by the prospect of having a new limb service. Uh, clearly, this is going to be important to future proof healthcare and the way modern healthcare is uh, is going forward. How is Link engaging with the service? So we work very closely with the professional bodies uh, and NWIS as well to make sure that it's fit for purpose. We have uh, several subject matter experts uh, within the Link programme who are providing expertise into what we do in and how it interacts. And of course, we are linking in with champions within each of the health boards and trusts as well. Uh, we've set established workshops, meetings and events. Um, obviously, because of COVID, it's been a little bit difficult this time, but this is the start of the process and uh, hopefully there'll be uh, lots of different events going forward. Uh, the procurement teams to buy the new limb service that's been um, robust and all encompassing with colleagues from different health boards and uh, trusts, as well as the different professional groups in, in the procurement team to check and challenge the, the service that we're providing going forward. Uh, communications is a very important part. We do have a new website and a new Twitter uh, feed as well for those who may have seen it. And so we're very keen to uh, work closely with you to keep the consistent messages uh, going forward, uh, but very keen that you can tell us what works for you and how we can better engage with you as well. If I can hand you over to Karis, who's looking after the, um, the procurement uh, process. Thank you, Paul, and thank you to everyone who has attended today. For those of you who haven't met me, I am the project manager for the procurement of the new limbs. In simple terms, procurement is the buying of goods and services to enable the NHS to run on a day-to-day -day basis. The procurement is led by NWIS Commercial Services, and we have undertaken competitive dialogue as part of the procurement. At the end of the procurement, we will have a main contract called the Master Services Agreement, 
and then individual subcontracts with each health board called deployment orders. The procurement teams are split into three with pathology leads in each, functional technical, operational governance and commercial legal financial. There are six stages of procurement. We started with publishing a contract notice in January 2020 then the official journal of the European Union, advising bidders across the world of the opportunity. The value of the OGEU notice published was 22 million and the contract is for seven years but can be extended for another up to two years. For all the bidders, we long listed five suppliers in March 2020. The procurement has had been a very long process but shortlisted three suppliers in August 2020 and have engaged in two rounds of competitive dialogue. Trial invitation to submit final tender ended on the 12th of February. An invitation to submit final tender will be published on the 23rd of February in March 2020. The procurement has had been a very long process, but shortlisted three suppliers in August 2020 and have engaged in two rounds of competitive dialogue. Trial invitation to submit final tender ended on the 12th of February. An invitation to submit final tender will be published on the 23rd of February and will close on the 9th of March this year. This is the final scoring stage before the chosen supplier is selected and the award process commences on the 2nd of April, with the aim for the contract to be awarded at the beginning of June this year. Thank you, I'll now hand you back to Paul. Okay, thank you, Karis. Um, so I'm gonna, I wanna talk to you about the long-term ownership and management of the service. So again, perhaps just re really reinforcing on this, who, who actually owns the limb service. Uh, and certainly within Link, uh, we believe that pathology should own the service. I'm very keen that uh, you actually take ownership from it, from this, particularly the, the pre-planning and the actual operational stuff it sent. So what does this mean? Um, we've got some governance processes here. There'll be a, a contract board, which will be set up, a national contract board, which will be chaired by, by, the, pathology lead, by the pathology lead to, in, to oversee all the work and development that's taking place. Um, and this is, will be that all health boards and trusts will sit on this contract board, so everyone will have a, an equal voice into the understanding and work that's ongoing across all of Wales with the local nuances as well. Um, we'll work closely with the National Pathology Network, so any changes that go through this particular group will be will be clinically tested and challenged, and these guys will actually have the um, the approval uh, stages and agree any process that need to happen in there. The limb service governance. So we obviously the governance here includes service management, change management, uh, NHS application support, help deck services, uh, quality management services includes lim limbs validation. Um, but very clear that uh, there's a, an appropriate governance process here and that uh, accountability and delivery is a vital part or partner in this but certainly being clear about the responsibilities of all, all respective parties. Uh, the supplier, when we know who these are going to be, uh, Digital Health and Care Wales and Health Boards and Trusts. Uh, what I have here is a schematic of the, um, of the governance process. You can see it's quite a busy slide, but um, uh, this is this just sort of helps with the, with the governance uh, across across Wales here. Uh, some of you may notice that uh, the chair of Cardiff and Vale, Len Richards, is the chair of the National Pathology Network. So a very good feed in there from Cardiff and Vale um, with the various different groups uh, feeding up to Welsh Government, but uh, very much equal partners in this to make sure that the appropriate governance and scrutiny and checks and challenges and balances are all robust and uh, and sound going forward. If I could uh, hand you over to Kevin, who's going to discuss um, an end-to-end -end electronic uh, pathology solution. Okay. Thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you everybody for coming along to listen to us today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, some of you may already know me, of course, but um, my name is Kevin Williams and I'm the lead pathology subject matter expert for LINK. And I'm going to talk to you about the LINK Objective 6, which is uh, to deliver a seamless end-to-end -end electronic pathology solution. So what are we intending to deliver as part of the end-to-end -end service? Uh, the first uh, is one that a lot of people will be familiar with, and that's uh, the electronic test requesting and results reporting, and LINK is uh, helping to uh, uh, drive the delivery of uh, an efficient end-to-end uh, -end electronic requesting and reporting service. 
Uh, of course, uh, we are going to be delivering the, the LIMS service itself. And you've heard a lot about um, the procurement process that we've been through to, um, to, to uh, deliver the, the LIMS service. Now, the LIMS service that we are procuring uh, comprises of the, the laboratory information management system itself, which uh, most of you will be familiar with. We have been running on the national system for many years now, but it also includes uh, other things such as document scanning. Uh, and you're probably well aware that uh, document scanning is delivered in Wales uh, from different uh, from several different solutions. And I'm aware that Cardiff and Vale have their own document scanning solution. Um, we also uh, want to deliver um, as part of the contract a digital dictation, which will include speech, speak rec speech recognition and voice command. Also the, the vein to vein blood tracking with remote issue uh, and uh, business intelligence. Um, we're also, as uh, previously explained, expecting the supplier to fully host the limb service. Uh, so uh, as Judith said before, it won't be a split um, uh, responsibility between Enris and the supplier. It will be totally supplier dependent. Uh, but we're also looking at a new model for integration services and Link have provided support to Enris to develop the integration services. And that includes uh, the, the sending and connection the center of information and the connection to downstream systems uh, such as Dawn and Canisk. And we are expecting the supplier to deliver on 99.9% .9 availability of all these systems. So in terms of electronic test requesting, uh, Link is facilitating the improvements in electronic test requesting. And how are we managing to, to do that? Well, first of all, by uh, working with the service and engaging with the service, we've actually identified the gaps in the, the Welsh clinical pathology, the, the Welsh um, um, WCP and the GP requesting services. And Enris have, uh, Enris have been provided with funding from Link to develop these tools. Also, funding has been provided to the health boards and trusts to improve uptake. And also, we've been successful in securing funding from Welsh Government uh, to provide new PCs and printers uh, for clinics and uh, GP practices, etc., to help the uptake of, uh, of the electronic solutions. Uh, again, we have a target and we aim to achieve an uptake of at least 90% of electronic test requesting by December 2022. So the Improvements that are planned that have come from the gap analysis we've undertaken, and um, we have prioritised the, the developments uh, that NWIS will be undertaking to help improve this, are uh, um, to the delivery of uh, e-forms, that's the electronic forms, and that's a, that's a new way up, uh, of, um, of uh, requesting the tests uh, at the user interface level, and it makes it a lot easier for people to actually request tests on the system. Uh, we've worked uh, with colleagues in histology to um, develop the requirements for histology requested and that is currently being developed. Uh, improvements have been uh, made in the results alerts and notifications and this is where pathology, uh, pathology users are, um, are notified of key results that they may be interested in in order to manage their patients and also to be able to record any actions against um, results that they have undertaken. Additionally, we'll be rolling out the ETR to, um, to the Powish users, and there's been a lot of work undertaken on the GP portal, uh, and uh, work has been um, undertaken to improve and develop the All Wales results, documents, graphing, and tabulation for GP practices. So as well as the planned improvements, there are improvements that will follow. And Link is going to provide further funding in 2021 to 22 to extend the e-forms that I've talked about for use in the GP surgeries. And uh, as well as that, uh, there is going to be a dedicated microbiology e-form developed and work is uh, uh, being carried out on that. And that will make the um, requesting for microbiology tests slicker and uh, easier for the users. Uh, there is going to be the rollout of the national phlebotomy module which is currently being piloted and has been uh, had input from Swansea Bay 
um, people to help develop this service. Uh, and on top of all that, um, that we are intending to modernise the Welsh Pathology Handbook. Okay, so I will now pass on to Dr. Andar Gunaberg. Thank you very much. My name is Andra Gunnerberg and I'm a chemical pathologist and clinical lead for laboratory medicine in Swansea Bay. I also chair the Link Standardisation Strategy Group. So what does standardisation actually mean? Well, when the current lens was implemented, local configuration was introduced in every health board and sometimes on each site so that there are now at least six versions or six configurations of the limbs. Standardization means that there will in future only be a single agreed standardized configuration of link. Thus, there will be one standardized way of doing things within the limbs for all of Wales. There may be some, uh, some agreed warranted variation, but the default will be a single standardized configuration for everything for all of Wales. So why do we need to standardize? Well, it is expected of us by the Welsh Government, the collaborative executive group of chief executives, and ultimately by Welsh patients and taxpayers who want the limbs to support an efficient, effective pathology service. It has been made very clear that standardization on a single limbs is a condition of support by the government for the outline business case for link. Standardization will lead to reduced duplication, for example, configuration effort and reduced organizational complexity in that there will be one process for one thing. Standardization leads to harmonization of practice and reduces clinical risk as it reduces variation in practice. What is safer? All experts combining to agree an optimal approach or six groups each doing their own thing. Should not any group which has the safest approach in Wales share their insight with the rest. Standardization reduces divisions and barriers and confirms we are one service and not six joined up in a paper exercise. Standardization avoids potential conflict in sample identification, data outputs, data collection and interfacing. It enables technical and clinical validation on a cross-site basis. Standardization improves the flexibility of staff, service delivery and change. Updates or revision of the limbs itself will be simplified. Agreed changes will be implemented and tested once and not six times. Therefore, changes take less long and the system becomes more flexible. How are we standardizing? Well, a baseline has been described of where there is currently variation in the pathology service that affects the limbs. The standardization strategy group has defined issues where standardization is both needed for link and possible to achieve. The standardization groups in each discipline are currently working on achieving agreement on all these areas supported if needed by the relevant standing scientific advisory groups. Where there is doubt, the standardization leads for each discipline will define the standard and there is an escalation process. The agreed standardized approach will inform the design of the single link configuration for Wales. Once standardization has been agreed, and we are running on the upgraded L2016 version of the current limbs, we will endeavour to implement standardisation as much as possible now to make link implementation less complex later. So what can you do? 
Well, maximum engagement in the work of the standardization groups will help to drive the process forward and ensure that the agreed single standardized configuration design is optimal for meeting clinical needs. In summary, a single standardized link for Wales will support the pathology statement of intent vision of a standardized, integrated, streamlined, lean, efficient, effective pathology service across hospital sites within health boards, across health boards within regional networks, and across Wales in a national network. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Sorry. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ana Maldonado, Quality Manager for the Lean Programme, and I'm going to talk to you about the Quality Management Service. First of all, I would like to introduce you to the Quality Management Project Team. So we have Chris Evans as the Validation Manager, Scott Bevan and Callum McCormack and as the Test Analyst Trainer, Mark Oranchi as Support Project Senior Officer, Stacy Richards, Quality Management Officer. So as part of the Quality Management Service, we are aiming to develop and implement a Quality Management System certified to ISO 9001. This comprises a set of policies and procedures which will help us to lead and maintain the validation of the new LIMS service, lead, and lead the testing and training of the new LIMS service, support standardization of the pathology service across Wales, and this activity will be underpinned by the use of electronic quality management system. This tool is called iPassport. This system has been procured and the contract was awarded back in March 2020 for all Wales. It has been funded by the Welsh Government for three years and it is available for use by all services. Currently, it is being developed for use by Link, Enguis, Cumtaf Pathology, Public Health Wales Microbiology and WECAS. Now I hand it over to Kevin. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Um, so I am now going to um, talk about uh, the LINK Objective 9, which is to develop uh, the information and business intelligence services uh, for pathology in Wales. So what is um, pathology business intelligence and how, what do we understand about it in, in relation to, them, to the limbs? So uh, business intelligence in pathology is used to produce operational dashboards. Now, what I mean by operational dashboards is um, is uh, dashboards that we use to um, determine our overdue work and work which is outstanding and these can be uh, on the system or they can be printed or we have been involved in uh, piloting a number of uh, live dashboards on large screens in in, um, in in the pathology laboratories and these dashboards work in real time and actually provide a real time uh, indication of the amount of work that is still outstanding within the labs. Um, very importantly, uh, business intelligence is um, used to provide our uh, management information and this is information that managers will use in order to assess their services and how well their services are doing. And this includes things such as percentages and trends uh, in our workload and our activity and uh, the demand for our services. Um, we can also use management information for our key performance indicators. And one of the key performance indicators that um, that uh, we're very familiar with in pathology is uh, laboratory turnaround times. Um, we can also use the information to uh, bill requesters for private work or for inter-laboratory work that, that we perform for other laboratories. And also we use it to uh, um, assess our demand and capacity and use it for planning uh, when new um, clinical services are brought on, on board. So how is uh, business intelligence being delivered by Link? Well, Link has uh, put in place a, a team of three uh, BI subject matter experts, um, and uh, many of you will be familiar with those people and ha will have worked with them, particularly on the, the Link-led development of uh, the Deep Sea 2 uh, dashboards, which has been led by this team in collaboration with, uh, with many of the service users. Uh, as part of uh, the development of DeepC2, uh, 
and uh, as part of the procurement, Link has defined the requirements for the new limbs. And this includes uh, the BI requirements that we will provide to the supplier upfront so that the supplier can develop a number of uh, business intelligence tools for us, which will be um, available for us to uh, run business intelligence uh, queries and dashboards at the very first go live and the supplier will be responsible for doing that upfront and this will be available at the first go live which is planned to be Cardiff and Vale. And on top of that the link team that we've put in place will be able to provide <laughs> ongoing business intelligence support throughout the life of the contract and help to develop new dashboards and new business intelligence requirements. Okay. So I'll hand over now to, to Judith. Thanks, Kev. So I'm going to talk to you now about the different approach to integration services. And this slide um, shows the complexity of the full end to end limb service, really. I shan't try to explain it all to you, but I'd like to pick out some key systems that the limbs will be integrated with. In the top right hand corner, you can see the connection to the Welsh reference data service, and that provides all the organisation, location and requester codes to make sure that only authorised requesters can request tests from known NHS locations. On the right, you can see um, the box called Health Board uh, and the limbs will connect to local systems and equipment, including point of care testing and be able to receive the results from point of care testing into the limbs. Also on the right, you can see MPEX, which is the National Pathology Exchange developed in England and that will allow test requests to be sent electronically out of Wales or electronic requests received into Wales. Um, and on the left, you can see a reference to digital cellular pathology, and it is intended that the new limbs will be able to work seamlessly with this new technology. So how is integration changing then? So the new approach is that we're, we're providing um, extra staff for NHS Wales informatics services and we're removing direct interfaces from the limbs to over 60 local downstream clinical systems and in the future a single extract will be taken from the limbs and fed through an integration engine to them um, and to other systems as well like the national data resource. And that's really a, <clears throat> quite a significant change to the way we've been doing integration so far. I'd like now just to tell you about the next steps. And this is what will happen once we've signed the contract with a successful supplier for the new LIM service. Link is planning three work streams. The LIM service development work stream will put in place all the system services required to develop, test and validate the new LIM service so that it meets the pathology requirements and is clinically safe to go live. At the bottom you can see the national deployment project there and that will make sure that all the national services for service management, change management, help desk services, testing and training are in place to support the service. The local deployment projects work stream in the middle um, uh, will be for each health board to set up uh, and and support the development of the new limb service and prepare for deployment. Cardiff and Vale will be the first to go live, the Vanguard, and they're aiming to have their project board set up and running by the end of March. And we would like to see all local deployment projects and their project boards in place by this summer. Even if you're not going live till later, it's important to be, you know, to be part of the development and testing and to have your board in place. The LIMS-1 project with MWIS will take forward work in LIMS-1 to make the transition to the new LIMS service easier to achieve, such as implementing standardised workflows in Track Care Lab now, as, as Andar mentioned. Also, we will support Swansea Bay in a dual running of blood transfusion in Track Care Lab and Master Lab. And once proven to be clinically safe to go live, um, to, to actually go live with Track Care Lab for blood transfusion. And then following that, if other health boards want to want to go live to migrate their blood transfusion to track care lab then link will support them too. So that's all we have to share with you today. Thank you for listening. It's now time for you to ask questions. So if you have a question please put your hand up and I'll invite you to ask your question and then please turn on your video and ensure you're not mute and tell us your name and role first. Thank you. So any questions?
So, Paul, do you have any questions that people asked beforehand that we could perhaps share with people today? No, absolutely. So I think one of them was um, around the the cost of the over the overall service. What's it going to cost? So, well, on the OJU notice, the um, the published value of the contract was twenty two million pounds over the life of the contract. But the cost of the business case will be more than that because we need to include the cost of setting up the National Quality Management Service, the cost of the additional staff at MWIS for integration services. Um, so um, I think that um, the overall cost will be higher, but the, the published cost of the contract was £22 million. Great, right, thank you. Another question I had then is uh, what does LINK do? What does LINK do? Well, LINK is a program, so we, we are providing professional program and project management to help facilitate um, the, this, this, the work, which is both the transformation of pathology services um, as well as procuring and implementing the new LIM service. OK, uh, and another question I had then is uh, who is running LINK and is it independent from ENRIS? So um, I think um, Paul briefly showed us a, an organisation chart earlier, which showed that we have a board. Um, Adrian has introduced himself. He's the senior responsible owner and ultimately responsible for the success of the programme. And Adrian is the executive director of therapies and health sciences in Betsy Cadwallader um, University Health Board and, and formerly from a pathology background. So, and, the, and he chairs the, the programme board for LINK and we report to the Collaborative Leadership Forum, the chairs and chief executives, ultimately, uh, and ultimately Welsh Government, but, but, through, but on a day-to-day on a -day basis um, to the Collaborative Executive Group of Chief Executives for Wales. OK, thank you. And another question I had then, will Enwys be running the new system? So no, MWIS won't be running the new system. The supplier will be running the new system, but it has to integrate with, you know, as I showed you in that complex slide, with lots of systems that MWIS do support and run, the Welsh Clinical Portal, the uh, Welsh Reference Data Service, and also MWIS support the integration to other systems like point of care testing. Uh, so, that, so MWIS do have a big role to play in supporting the delivery of the full end-to-end -end service that we're providing. OK, um, another one I had then is uh, how is LINK run and who's accountable for the programme? Well, LINK is run, as I say, we have a programme, so we have a programme board um, and then uh, we have a programme management office um, of which which Paul is leading for me as senior programme manager and, and project managers and, and senior project support officers. Then in addition to that, we have a team of pathology subject matter experts. So Kevin, is our, uh, who's with us today, is our lead subject matter expert um, and he has a team of staff. Um, uh, uh, we have um, Gabriel, who is an expert in limbs and blood transfusion, particularly you may know him. And we have Ruth, who came from Cardiff and Vale, who's an expert in cellular pathology. Um, and um, we have Phil, who's with us today, who comes to us, who chairs the Deep Sea Development Group and is an, it comes from a pathology background, but with an expert in business intelligence. Um, and we also have some business analysts on the team supporting them um, as well. So uh, we have uh, quite a team of subject matter experts to work with their colleagues in the service. And then we have the quality management service that Anna has described um, and that she runs. Okay. But, but in a, sorry, I, I think just to add, Paul, you know, Andar's here with us today, and it's it's important to reflect the fact that the work on standardisation is being run by the Strategy Standardisation Group, which is chaired by Andar and led by the standardisation leads. That you know, we work closely with the professional groups known as specialist standing advisory groups. So these are Welsh government committees that are set up for each professional body, um, and we have one for each discipline. Um, for pathology and um, they are leading this in the sense that they have appointed their standardisation lead. They also have a clinical lead and in addition to that, they we've asked them to set up a standardisation group for their discipline. And so all of that comes together through the strategy standardisation group. So as I said earlier, you know, Link is trying to facilitate this and make sure things are happening, but we're trying to help the service to do this for themselves. 
and I, I'd like to un underline that. Um, it, it, Judith mentioned the link program board, and that's got representation from every mm -hmm. single health board on it uh, with service representation. I, I'm on that for Swansea Bay, and I, I, I would say that very much uh, my view of this is that the, the link programme and the procurement and implementation of link, link, this is not something that link is doing to us as people working in pathology. This is something that link is doing on our behalf and with our input. Thanks, Sandor. Do you have any other questions, Paul? Um, I think just one for, one for me, which may be helpful, was um, obviously the way uh, healthcare is improving and going forward. Just uh, obviously, how does our system uh, reflect that? The new system reflect modern healthcare? Well, we have worked with the pathology service and we ran 46 workshops to develop the requirements for the new limb service. So and we ran workshops for every discipline and nuance um, and we looked at what what we need now and what we need in the future. And, and we worked um, with the service and we then we sent a, a broad range of people and we brought in people from specimen reception as well as people at all levels uh, of working in the laboratory to try and make sure that we covered everybody's point of view. Uh, and we have tried to make sure that we have built into that what the service needs for the future. Having said that, going back to my um, slide with all the speech bubbles on, one of those says there is no perfect limbs out there. And um, we did an exercise <coughs> um, uh, and we had teams of pathology, pathology staff going out to view. So um, uh, w the su suppliers said to us, these are the these are our sites that you can go and visit easily in the UK. So this was pre COVID. And so teams of pathology staff did go and visit all the different supplier systems that were out there in the UK. And what came back is there isn't something there isn't a system out there that does everything that we want it to do. So we have to buy a system that offers us the best fit um, and and um, and we're doing that through, as Carrie said, the procurement teams um, uh, that have representation from all the different disciplines on there. And we have leads for each of the disciplines working with us, as well as health board and trust representatives to make sure that whatever system we buy is the best fit for Wales. But I can't guarantee it will do everything that we want. No, absolutely. I, th I think the, the questions that have come back, I think uh, the majority of people have asked the, that the system going forward is reliable and consistent. Mm -hmm. And I yes. think that that's really important for for the service. And uh, I guess what are we doing to ensure that we can give people that confidence, I guess? Yes, well, we we have to have 24 contract schedules with the new supplier. Schedule 2.1 is the big one that says exactly what we want the service to provide. That's the one that we had the 46 workshops to to develop. But in addition to that, we um, have Schedule 2.2, which is about service levels. And in that we have said that we want 99.99% availability. And it explains how that will work, what we're expecting of all the, you know, the way that the supplier will manage the service to deliver that level and how they will be penalised if they don't deliver that level, which will be through a process called service credits. So they actually get paid for delivering the service, really, rather than penalised for not delivering it. So um, so there are financial penalties associated if they, if they don't deliver. OK, that's good. I, th I think just one other thing, Judith, just helpful for colleagues within uh, within the trust themselves, just what our plans are for taking this forward with the actual implementation, maybe. So, well, I think the key thing is that we, we have the central um, uh, uh, process uh, pro or the project stream that will develop the limb service once for Wales. And, the, and what we have been working on is defining um, the configuration. So we've been working hard over the last year or more defining what is the current configuration of the current limbs. And that involves thousands, um, several thousand different items of data of the, and information. For example, there's over 1400 test set workflows in the system. 
Um, and we have been uh, extracting those and we've been trying to put them together in a way. So they come out in code. We have to convert them into Visio diagrams and then put them together so that the um, standardization leads can make sense of them and view them um, and then decide where standardization could be achieved. So, for example, the um, uh, blood test a standard for blood count, I believe, took about 75 pages to document in Visio um, because it is it is very complex. Now, some of that is justified and will always be the case, and some of that could be rationalised and streamlined, and the standardisation leads will be doing that work. So um, hopefully that will make it um, the new system a little bit slicker. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it, it's good. Maybe I can ask a question of Andra as well, particularly the sort of uh, clinical uh, interaction. Uh, how do you think the, the work that we are doing, particularly on a on an all Wales level, will, will benefit the service going forward? I, I think that what, one of the biggest complaints about the current service that that um, relates to what individual health boards might want to do, relates to the slowness of any change. And, and, and I think if the work of standardization is completed and we have a single agreed configuration, first of all, in, in getting that agreed configuration, uh, all health boards will have had some input into that. But secondly, if subsequently somebody comes up with a bright idea that um, it is easy to explain to all their colleagues and their colleagues all agree, it should be very, very easy to get that changed and get it changed for everybody so that everybody will do things better or more efficiently than is the case at present. What tends to happen at present is that something is proposed and then there are endless discussions and, and even once something is agreed it takes absolutely ages to get it changed and then when it is changed it is found that because there are six different versions or more of what it is that you're changing it takes a long time to change it and then it takes a long time to test it and so on and so forth. So I think that's what that's one of the definite advantages of the approach that's now being taken. More flexibility in the future. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. And that's why the local deployment projects are important, because each health board needs to take responsibility for making sure that its own pathology service understands what's going to be the future state um, configuration, how that differs from the way they work now and to prepare the staff and the laboratories for a future way of working. Um, so, you know, we have allowed for warranty variation, but that variation has to be agreed up front. When we deploy the system, we won't be coming to each health board and saying, well, how do you want it to work? How do you want it to work? That's all going to be done once for Wales. And then when we deploy it, it will be the same for everyone. I'm not saying there won't be issues when it's deployed first at Cardiff and Vale. There may well be issues that come out when we try to prepare, you know, after we feel we've developed and tested it and then try to go live in Cardiff and Vale, issues may arise. But when we resolve those issues, they have to be resolved for all of Wales and not just for Cardiff and Vale. No, absolutely. That's that's great. Thanks, Judith. Could you explain to everyone what we're going to do next? I mean, this is the this is the first of two work uh, workshops for Cardiff and Vale in particular, and that we're actually going across all of Wales doing uh, similar things for health boards and trusts as well. But perhaps if you could uh, kindly let colleagues know what we're going to do next as far as feedback and things like that. Yes, yeah, so we, we, we're going to send out staff um, uh, um, the link overview, which will tell you more about the programme. We're going to send you um, a feedback form, um, so we hope that you will fill that in and return that to us so that we understand how valuable, you, how useful you found this, this, this first of our, you know, virtual roadshows. We'll be sending that, that to everyone. We want to know if this is a useful way to talk to you, particularly um, during these COVID days. We were, we were planning to come out physically last year and we we're unable to do so. We had to cancel everything. Um, so that's important to us. And um, 
and also we will be asking you you know to to give us to give us more questions we have an internet site it's new it's only just up and running but we will have a frequently asked questions section put on there and we will be answering those questions and putting them up there and if there's more information you want to see then you can um, please ask us and we can uh, we can answer your questions for you absolutely and if i can just add that uh, we've recorded this session as well and uh, we'll make it available to colleagues who are unable to attend today and uh, they can uh, view it at their own time and leisure then so so i'd just like to ask if anybody does have a question who's here if we <laughs> we seem to have <laughs> silenced you all <laughs> Nope. OK. I think we've nearly hit our hour now anyway, so. Yes. Well, I'd like to thank you all for attending today and for your time and I really appreciate you giving up the time to hear about what Link is doing. And uh, we really do also appreciate your feedback and tell us how we can improve what we're doing, how we can better communicate with you. Thank you. OK, thanks. Thanks, thanks everyone. Yeah. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.